Hello boys and girls, this is John O'Bacon. How are you doing? I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for joining me for another video. Um, so today I want to talk about webinar jam statistics. Now, I'm going to assume that you have run a webinar already, or you're thinking about running a webinar, and you've seen that dashboard that's in the platform, and you're thinking, how the hell does that thing work? And what should I be reading? And what should I be learning from that? So that's what this video is going to be all about. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through a real webinar that I ran, uh, I'm going to share my screen and go over the dashboard and look at the data that I had in my webinar and kind of share some thoughts on what the numbers mean, uh, what good looks like when it comes to registration rate, when it comes to show up rate, you know, the overall rating of the, of the webinar itself, uh, attendance time, all of those different bits and pieces. And then what can we learn from this data? Because to me, that is the most important thing that we should always be looking at, right? I don't care whether you're building a community um, around a forum or a Facebook group or in a Slack channel. However you're building a community, content is so critical to building growth and webinars are an amazing tool for that. But the only way in which we get better out with our communities and with our content is by looking at data. And sometimes that data, frankly, can be bloody uncomfortable to consume. You're like, ooh, that doesn't look good. But then we learn from it and we get better, okay? All right, so let's dive right into it. I'm gonna share the old screen right here. There we go. So this is the webinar that I ran, okay? Um, I ran this about... When was it? A couple of weeks ago, I think it was, early this month. As you can see at the bottom, it says uh, this webinar has expired uh, because, you know, it's happened already. Spoiler alert. We've got a little video at the top. I'm actually going to go through a second. Um, I'm going to make another video about how I think you should, uh, how I would recommend you structure um, a webinar landing page. But we'll skip over that for now. I just wanted to give you a sense of what this webinar was all about, right? So they go here, they register. And now let's dive over to the Webinar Jam interface. So this is the one. You can see it's a clone. I'm really great at renaming my cloned projects. Not. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and click on My Analytics. Okay, now I'm going to select the webinar, which is this one. And then I'm going to uh, select this one, the 1st of June session, which I ran at 10 a.m. where I live, Pacific time, this one. Okay, so click on Go. So um, this was the second time I'd run this session. Um, you know, I promoted it a reasonable amount. I think I got um, a decent registration rate for this. I got 95 people signed up. Um, but kind of what I want to walk through, this piece here I think is one of the most important elements of what we should be reading when we're evaluating this dashboard, okay? So what this tells us, first of all, is the number of visitors that hit your site. Now, this might be a site like this, which is I'm running it on my web page, but, you, you know, Webinar Jam have got their own landing pages. But this is how many people hit that website, right? And then how many people signed up based upon that? So how many people clicked the register button and completed the registration, okay? Now, as a general rate, you know, I tend to aim for about 30%. I generally want about 30% of people signing up for this. Now, this is a little bit less than 30%, and I was honestly expecting it to be kind of even less than that because this is kind of a specialist webinar that I was running. It was about how do you get a job as a community manager, which is a, a very specialist topic for people that might not necessarily need it right now because they might not be looking for a job, okay? So I was actually, frankly, I was pretty pleased with getting a 20 eight percent sign up rate but generally shoot for about a 30 percent rate now this is handy for when you're promoting your event for example because when you're in the middle of promoting it you want to be coming back here regularly and refreshing this page and checking what the sign up rate is now none of this information will have happened yet because you you want to run your webinar but you ideally want to see this rate going up so one of the things i i did for this for example is you know i had a first version of this page and I was getting about a 20% sign up rate, and I was like, well, I'm getting people get it, come into the page, but they're just not converting, right? So I was getting people to it, but it wasn't converting and getting enough of a sign up rate. So what you want to do is you want to, you know, keep checking this and then make a series of evaluations based upon what you're looking at here in how you can improve this, right? So again, I'm not going to go into the how to create a landing page video right now. I'll make a separate video about that. But, you know, one of the things I did here was, um, the old page, right, didn't have a video at the top, right? It just had the name of the webinar at the top. It was kind of boring, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, it had a bit of a, a bit of a scripty type thing here, and then it had this piece, what you'll learn. Um, so what I decided to add here was the bonuses, like the downloadable resume template, the tips guide, recommendations, all of these extra pieces, right? And then gradually I started seeing um, this starting to climb. Uh, sorry, this starting to climb. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't looking at the right bit of the screen. Busted. Um, 
So that's really important, okay? This one number is going to be super important because if you focus on it, then you're going to get more people signing up for your webinar. And the great thing about it is that once you've done this a few times and you've got this about right, then it acts kind of like a sales letter in, in a marketing funnel, right? It's it, it will generally work relatively consistently, so it's worth the effort. So when you run the webinar again, and you should always aim to run webinars multiple times, then you should be golden, okay? Now, let's look at the next one here, which is registrants. So this is the number of people that actually showed up. These are the number of people that, that came... Uh, sorry, sorry, this is the... <laughs> getting ahead of myself. These are the number of people that registered. The number of people that actually showed up was 41. So of the 95 that registered, 41 showed up. And this is a 43% show up rate. Now, as a general rule, the number that tends to get bandied around with a lot of people when they run webinars is a 30% show up rate. Um, and I think if you get 30% in my mind, frankly, should be a pretty much a bare minimum. Okay, if you if you get less than that, then it's not great. And one of the things I would recommend is if you're getting a lower than 30% show up rate, then you want to make sure that the emails that are going out to your attendees before your session are kind of reinforcing how valuable the content is, right? So if, you know, when somebody signs up for your session, they get the confirmation email, and then you can set in Webinar Jam, um, you know, for example, if I go here, uh, let me show you, okay, if I edit this, do the full configuration, next. If I go over to the notifications, right, you can get these reminder notifications in here, right, where you can set um, how often your attendees get get uh, emailed, right? Now, I tend to stick to the stock here, which is immediately upon registration and then a 15 minutes before it. But what I actually did that's not included in here is through my email, uh, through my email system, I actually sent them another couple of emails um, that basically talked about the content in the webinar and why it's kind of interesting, okay? So if you don't remind people, I'm going to go back to the webinar stats so we can continue. If you don't remind people before the session about the content you're going to cover, why it's super interesting and the problems that it's going to solve and the pain that it's going to reduce in their world, then they're just not going to show up, okay? So one of the reasons why I think I got a slightly higher uh, uh, show up rate, which, I, you know, 43%, I, I would argue is pretty good, Um is that I, I sent that additional information, right? So I got a higher number of people showing up. So I definitely recommend that, okay? So I, I think you ideally want to shoot for 40 to 45%, but 30% is your baseline. Now, the other, the other statistic here is replay attendees. Now, <sighs> replays are tough because I don't think a lot of people replay videos, uh, webinars. It's kind of weird if you think about it, the psychological relationship that we have with video. Because if you kind of sit there and watch a YouTube video, that's that's fine, and you watch it, and it's very passive, right? But sitting there and watching a pre-recorded live session, I think for most people, feels a bit weird. I don't know why. I can't quite explain it. But what I've seen in my in my work is that you tend to get a relatively limited number of people who actually replay sessions. And if they do replay them, they very rarely get through most of the video. And we'll see what that looks like a little bit further down. So actually, a 7% replay is I'm pretty happy with this. Frankly, my view is so long as you get something, that's good. But I don't really count on it, OK? Now, this is where it gets really, really interesting, OK? This is one of my favorite bits of data in Webinar Jam. And this is the attendance rate throughout the session. Now, this is important for a, a few different reasons, right? So what it does, the way this graph works, is it shows you the number of attendees here um, on this axis here. And then on the X axis, you've got kind of the number of attendees at any singular point in the session. So this gives you a sense of when people are joining and kind of the drop off time. So what, what can we read in this? Now I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can kind of really understand this, okay? All right, there we go. Now, what this is telling me, and this is to me is the real value of, of, of why we focus on data and why data is so important in all content that we produce, not just in terms of webinars. The first thing is, it, this is telling me that for the first kind of like, really the first five minutes of the session, you know, like we had, when, when the session started out, 29 people were in there and then th an extra six people joined, right? At around the five minute mark. And then it kind of climbed up a little bit and it went up to 37. What this tells me is about, it needs about five minutes for the late stragglers to kind of come in. So your first five minutes of your session is tricky because on one hand, you want to kind of engage your audience and keep them excited and interested and start getting down to content. 
But on the other hand, you don't want to start giving away too much of your, you know, the value because you may get your late stragglers who come in and then they can't figure out what's going on and then they drop off, okay? So what this is telling me here is the next time I run this session, I'm actually going to make sure that I pad out the first five minutes with maybe setting expectations, what we're going to be covering um, before we start getting into the real meat of it. Now, you can see here as well that um, it started tailing off a little bit kind of down to here at about, you know, it gradually tailed off, which is very, very common with webinars. But, you know, the full duration of the webinar, 24 people out of my 29 people that joined, and it ultimately went up to 37 people, stayed to the end of the session, which I'm reasonably happy with. What that tells me is that the majority of the people who came to the session found the entire session valuable. Okay, now that's great, because I'd only run this webinar once before, so I wasn't really sure whether it was going to be very good. And to me, it's really only this, once you've got two data sets, that's when you really know what to do. Because the first time you run the webinar, right, you uh, you get a kind of a curve like this. And then you may make some changes, and then you run it the second time, and then you can compare the two different curves, right? Um, and at that point, you now are able to sort of say whether, you're, whether your changes that you made uh, based upon the first session have actually made a difference, okay? So we only have a limited set of data because this is the second webinar that I've run. Uh, but I, you know, I'd make some changes. What this is telling me clearly is that the second half of the presentation from th about 25 minutes on to, yeah, pretty much the end of the session is less strong because people are dropping off. Okay. Now, some of this is going to be people have kind of a limited attention span. Some people can't sit there uh, and watch a webinar or they'll get distracted doing something else. But that shouldn't be an excuse. It's on us to make sure that we're keeping the content interesting and valuable and keeping people engaged, okay? But that's another pe useful piece of information. So what I would do now is go through, and I haven't done this yet because I'm going to run this again, but I just haven't done it yet, is I would go through and look at these, where this correlates in my actual deck. And you can actually download the video recording of your webinar to see exactly where you were in the session. Um, and then you can see, okay, well, this is where there was a drop off and this is what we need to focus on. Now, what's very common, especially if you're selling something in a webinar, a lot of people use webinars for kind of like top of funnel and then you do a sale or there's some kind of conversion at the end of it. Often that's where you see kind of a pretty significant drop off, okay? Usually right at the end. Now, in this session, I was mentioning a course that I was, uh, I just announced it that was in pre-order. Um, um, but as you can see, you know, people basically stayed to the end. I think I started talking about the course at about the 55 minute mark. So, you know, everybody sat through my little bit about the course, which is great. So that tells me that the course kind of little bit of promo that I did wasn't off putting, which is really important to me. I don't want to come across as one of those sales douchebags that are out there. All right. So let's now minimize this so I can see this a bit better. Um, now, Again, we've got some data up here, right? This tells me the number of live attendees, the session length. This was an hour and one minute and 20 seconds. Um, the average time on the live room. So that's about 39 minutes, which pretty much correlates with where we can see this little drop off. So I'm pretty happy with that, right? That was the majority of the session. And then just under 60% of people watch the full webinar. So again, that to me is a very, very strong kind of affirmation in my mind that overall the content was serving a useful, it was worth that person's hour because to me that's the number one goal of a webinar. You've got to make sure that it's super valuable for people. And then I did put a little survey up. Um, uh, nine people rated it. Uh, I promise you I'm not, none of this is like sanitized stats or anything like that. This is the actual data. Uh, so nine people, you know, not everyone is going to click the survey because by the time they're done, they just close the window and they don't necessarily see it. So nine people gave it five stars and I'm pretty stoked about that. So, yep, that's that's good. So at this point, when I was reading this for the first time, I was like, I'm feeling pretty good about this, right? I got a good sign up rate, a little bit less than I'd like. I want 30%. Very good show up rate. Um, the replays, <laughs> You know, you're in a world of mystery at that point, 7%. That sounds good. Uh, but overall, people seem to like it. Now, let's look at the replay webinar. Now, here's the thing with the replay is that um, um, I had seven people, right? This is not a lot of data. Like, you kind of need a reasonable amount of data to, to be able to get a real sense of whether, um, you know, people are actually watching the sessions, right? And seven's really not enough for me. I'd probably want to run this webinar at least another two or three times until I've got closer to 40 or 50 people doing the replays to analyze it. But again, we have a very, very similar graph here, which is kind of interesting. Now, let me zoom in, right? I'm, I'm not going to retread too much ground here. But again, at the beginning of the replay webinar, we've had seven people join. 
a couple of people drop off uh, another person drops off you see we have very little data so like one person dropping off goes all the way down here but then like three people kind of stick through to most of it which i'm kind of <laughs> if i'm being honest with you i'm kind of surprised let me tell you one thing i wouldn't i wouldn't sit there and watch a <laughs> webinar replay no sorry all right so, but this is good. I think 28 minutes in the in the replay room is good, but I still think we need to make it, you know, we need to try and get that number up. But I'd focus more on the live session. That's where the real value is, okay? And 28% have watched the full replay. That's, okay, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, now, in the monetization piece, you can see that this is all zero. Um, and the reason for this is that I didn't set any of the monetization up for this session. Um, I am going to do this in the future. It just wasn't really very high priority because I can tell the number of sales that are coming in for my training course. So, you know, I basically had about 10% of people who joined the session uh, purchased the course, which was great. And about 10% conversion rate is what I'm looking for. Now, if you're not selling something, uh, get rid of this now. If you're not selling something, that's totally fine. You can, um, you know, you can focus on uh getting people to go to your forum, getting people to come to your community, uh, getting people to sign up for your email list, uh, getting people to go to your next webinar, getting people to go to your event, whatever it is, you always want to have at least one CTA, one call to action at the end of each session that you can really kind of focus on to, um, you know, to kind of promote. And then you can check the conversion rates. If people stayed at the end of the session, then you can look at how many people who were left ended up purchasing from you. And then that gives you a conversion rate or, you know, going to your event or whatever it might be, and boom, we're looking in pretty good shape, okay? 10% conversion rate is what you want to be looking for, no matter what you're doing. So that's it. I hope that was useful. If you found this handy, be sure to hit that subscribe button uh, and like this video. It really helps me out a lot. I'm not a very well-known YouTuber, but I'm having a go at this whole YouTube business, so a like really does help me out quite a lot. Thank you for watching this. If you stay to the end, I'm not going to try and sell you anything, uh, and I'll see you on the other side. Bye-bye.